Physical and chemical changes of matter. Objective number one, I can identify the difference between a chemical and a physical change. Two, I can give examples of specific physical and chemical changes that occur in real life. In the front of your workbook, in the green pages, start from the front and flip through until you find the page that has the vocabulary words physical change, chemical change, reactant, product. We're going to uh, write notes on that page. So we're going to start with physical change. So the definition of physical change is a change in the physical property, all right, observable or measurable that you had the quiz on of matter without creating a new substance. So when we color on paper, are we changing the paper or is it still paper? It's still paper. We're just making it a new color, like dyeing it, okay? When I am making origami frogs, I'm still working with paper, all right? I'm just folding it or I may have to cut the paper. It's still paper. I have not created a new substance. Carpenters and construction workers, they're dealing with physical changes all the time. However, they're kind of dealing with the measurable properties because they've got to cut the wood so it fits a certain size. They're all still dealing with paper or wood. They're not creating a new substance. It's still the original substance, maybe in a new shape. Click pause so that you can copy the definition of physical change in your workbook. Now we're going to write the definition of a chemical change or a re chemical reaction in our workbook. So a chemical change or reaction is defined as changes in which one or more new substances are formed. When I'm burning a match, the new substances that are formed are carbon dioxide, that gas that we actually breathe out, and then also water vapor. When we burn a candle, and we light it. It also, the new substance that's formed is carbon dioxide and water. When we mix um, baking soda and vinegar, we actually are also creating carbon dioxide. Um, smoke is a gas. So that's our new substance. We just need to know what is actually made of that smoke. In those bubbles, when I mixed on the right picture, when I mixed the car uh, baking soda and the vinegar, that created a gas, carbon dioxide, and those bubbles are proving that we created this new substance. So please hit pause so that you can copy the definition of chemical change reaction, please. Now we're going to complete the clues that indicate we had this chemical change or chemical reaction. The first clue that tells me I'm having a chemical change is, number one, is a color change. And when I'm talking a color change, I mean a drastic color change. I'm not going from blue to a light blue. I'm not talking fading from the sun. We're talking a drastic color change. So the Statue of Liberty was a gift from France, all right, and it's made of copper. Well, what happens to copper pennies over the years? Well, they react with oxygen, and it creates that green color change. And it's a drastic color change because copper is that orangey bronze color. And then now the Statue of Liberty is not orangey bronze. It's now this green color, and that's all because of a chemical change with the air surrounding the copper and um, actually the vinegar that's in the water. When we look at the car, we have this white car, and then we see these yellowy, brown, orange spots on it, the rust. So the car's exterior actually had a drastic color change, changing from white to this rusty color, all right? And that rust is actually called a corrosion, and we'll actually talk about that more tomorrow. And then on the right, we have s'mores, marshmallows, all right? They've been burned. They drastically changed from white to this black-brown color, all right? And that is a definite chemical change. It's no longer necessarily marshmallow. It's now created this new substance on the outside. Please hit pause and copy um, number one color change into your notes. 
The next clue to indicate a chemical change, a chemical reaction, is heat's produced. So obviously we've got the match again, and then we've got candles burning. Heat is definitely produced. Sometimes when we can, um, mix chemicals, if we touch them with the back of our hand, we can feel that a heat is produced. And so that also is going to prove that um, we had a chemical change occur. So please hit pause and copy down heat produced into your notes. The third clue to indicate a chemical change is bubbles or gases produced. So on the left, we yet again have that mixture of baking soda and vinegar, which created that carbon dioxide gas bubbles. On the right, we have the Alka-Seltzer tablets that we put in water. They also are creating a gas because when you put them in the water, they create all these gas bubbles. So they're telling you it's actually going to help. I believe it calms your stomach. So those gas bubbles that are produced actually help calm your stomach when you ingest them. And in the middle, we have um, eggs cooking over easy eggs. And if you look closely, you're going to see that the whites actually have bubbles. And when an egg is actually cooked and those bubbles are produced, you're actually changing the egg. There's a new substance being formed. It's not chemically the same as it was when it was in the egg uh, shell. Okay. Please hit pause and copy the third clue to a chemical change. The last clue to a chemical change is lights produced. So before we had heat produced, not every time you have heat do you have light being produced, but in this case some of them have both um, clues. So on the left, we have the candles burning again, so obviously light is produced. On the right, yet again, we've got the match being um, pr uh, producing the fire, which is producing light. And in the middle, we have glow sticks. Well, glow sticks, you have to crack. And when you crack them, you're actually allowing the chemicals to mix together, and that is producing that um, fluorescent light that allows it to glow in the dark. So that is definitely a chemical change because it is producing light where before it was not. So please hit pause and uh, add to your notes the last clue to indicate a chemical change. At the bottom of your notes page, we have the vocabulary words reactants and products. So reactants are the starting substances in a chemical reaction. So that's gonna be my match and my candle wick. All right, in that example with the candles. Products definition is the new substance that's created as a result of a chemical reaction. So when I use that match to light that candle, the product would be the carbon dioxide that was created, that gas, and also the water vapor that was created, also a gas. All right, please copy these into your notes by hitting pause. Now I want you to open up your workbook. It's going to be a workbook page in the 30s. All right, I want you to find it, it says experiment and controlling variables at the top. All right, so we've got two beakers. We've got a beaker on the left and a beaker on the right. So for the experiment at the bottom, it says, in which beaker is a reaction taking place? Is it the beaker on the left or the beaker on the right? And then tell me how you know a reaction is taking place. Make sure you write in complete sentences. This is a two-point question. Hit pause and answer that question. Now for the controlling variables part. I need you to write this. It's in red on your screen. It says stays the same in both experiments. The word controlling means it's staying the same. So the, what is the same in the beaker on the left? And what's the same in the experiment on the right? Tell me all the things that stayed the same. Okay? It does not need to be in complete sentences. You can just do a bulleted list. Hit pause so you can complete the controlling variables. What variables are being controlled? Once you complete both questions, the one under experiment and the one under controlling variables, close your workbook and sit quietly so Mrs. Colville knows when she can continue the lesson. Thank you and good luck.